Welcome, everybody, to the Blazer Victory Podcast. This is your co-host, John Duncan, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Steve Irvine. And, guys, we've made it to the opening of Protective Stadium this Saturday. And, guys, I just want to start the episode and just, you know, just everybody, when you're in the stands this Saturday night for the Liberty game, just take a moment. And breathe it, just breathe the air, breathe it all in, and just remember that all the sweat, just all the hard work that everybody in this UAB program has put into making this day happen and making, in, in the city of Birmingham too, and just making all of this happen and just enjoy it. Now, you know, it's it's going to be a little emotional. You know, we, me and Steve just talked about it. It's, it's going to be a little emotional for everybody. But just enjoy it and enjoy a great company. I can't wait to get in there. Steve, you ready for this Saturday, bud? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And and I, <laughs> I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I think that, you know, there's so many people that, you know, worked their tail off, you know, for this program over the years. And, and you know, I'm not even, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not talking about just just the return sort of thing. I mean, there's, you know, there's going to be a lot of former players from you know, the early days and, you know, the days of, you know, of. Watson and days of you know Callaway and and you know uh, the, <laughs> the McGee uh, debacle, <laughs> but you know he had a lot of great players on those those teams, yes. the guys that worked their tail off. And I mean it just uh, you know, and then obviously there were you know guys since the return, and it's just it's just going to be you know a lot of people have put a lot of work into this, and and um, you know and a lot of people within the city, and this is just such a big day for you know not only uab but for the city of birmingham you know heck maybe you know a little more for the city of birmingham than than uab really and so it's just it's a community thing uh it's a uab thing it's just uh you know a day to celebrate now you know there's also a football game to play you know and, yeah and, and, and <laughs> you know and, and and honestly i i do think it's very important very important that uh that the crowd is a factor in this game too, you know, not yes. just, not just to show up and enjoy the you know, brand new stadium and, you know, look around and say, boy, this is great. And I mean, I, I think it, um, I think the great thing about this stadium that uh, the crowd's going to fit into it a lot better than it fitted in the Legion field. And, and, you know, Hey, let's be honest. I think the last few years there's the, the crowd has had an impact on some of you know, a lot of these games, Oh yeah, you, I mean, I mean, the Blazers won a lot, you know, a lot, of, a lot of games in a row at, at Legion Field. But I think that it's very important that that um, that you walk away from this thing Saturday night when it's over and saying, "Boy, that you know, that crowd really had an impact on this game." And and uh, and moving forward, that's going to be very important. But on Saturday, particularly Saturday, because this is a real good football team on the other sideline, and uh, and it's um, you know, obviously has one of the best players of the country and Malik Willis. And so, um, it, it's, it's, it's important in a, in a lot of ways, but, uh, you know, our pregame, uh, is going to be, you know, it's, it's going to be emotional. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I, I really look forward to see the, you know, what they came up with for, you know, the song they're going to come into the, you know, the video that they, I know they've worked their tail off on. Uh, I, I do know, and I'm not going to say who, but I do know there's a little special guest on there that, uh, it helped out on that, that I think that, you know, be in your seat and be ready to watch that and, um, and watch the pregame stuff and just kind of soak it in and have a fun time. Definitely. And get in your seat early, you know, kickoff is at six. So get in your seat early to make sure that you don't miss any of the uh, action this Saturday night. And unfortunately, Steve, we're not playing Savannah state. <laughs> we're at playing the yeah. <laughs> flame. So we're not getting an easy opponent this Saturday night, as you just mentioned, but, uh, but that's okay. You know, that's yeah. okay. I think that adds to the, to the, to the specialness of, of, of the day. I mean, of the, you know, not only do you have this brand new place and it's an awesome day, um, it's going to be a heck of a game too, you know, and, and it's going to take everybody to win this game. I mean, it's going to take everybody sitting in these stands. It's going to take every player. Uh, you know, it's going to take the inspiration of these, of, of the former players. I mean, you know, they're just, they're just, I mean, this is, this is a team effort, man. And, and, and that's what's, that's what's kind of cool about this. No doubt. And I can definitely tell you, uh, my section, uh, section 125, or as we like to say, club 125, we're going to be rowdy over there and we're going to get on that Liberty bench, you know, heckle them a little bit. We're going to be loud over at uh, club 125. So definitely can't wait to get there saturday night at uh and like i said you know the game's at six but 
everybody make sure you get there early just to make sure that you're in your seat before the action starts. Cause you know, before the game starts, they're going to recognize the 2020 uh, last year's conference USA championship team. Um, so you definitely don't want to miss that. And as Steve just said, you know, they've got a lot of good things, you know, planned uh, for this first game at protector stadium. So get there. If you don't have your tickets, Right now, stop what you're doing while listening to this and go to UABsports.com and get those tickets. You do not want to wait until game day and take the chance of walking up to the gate to buy a ticket because, guys, this is a hot ticket. I mean, they've already sold over thirty, almost 35,000 tickets for this game, I believe. Um, so it, it's going to be a hot ticket. So definitely, if you do not have your ticket, go ahead right now and go ahead and get your ticket for this Saturday night's game. Um, but we've got a game. Liberty comes into town six o'clock this Saturday night. If for some reason you're not at Protective Stadium, CBS Sports Network will be televising the game. But of course, as always, you can go to Jocks 94.5 FM radio. Uh, starting at 5 o'clock to listen to uh, Landrum Roberts with the pregame, uh, but also David Crane, uh, Steve Irvine, and Trey Raglan on the call for the game. Um, in a, just a couple minutes, um, we're going to roll our interview with John Manson, who uh, is uh, the owner of A Sea of Red, which is a website that covers uh, Liberty Athletics. You know, they do a fantastic job. They've got you know, articles, magazines, uh, podcasts, uh, they just do a great job um, independently, you know, covering Liberty. Um, so definitely give them a follow on Twitter at a sea of red um, and also go to a sea of red dot com because there might be a piece uh, in the next day or so that, um, you know, Steve was able to answer some questions for. So be on the lookout for that. But Steve, let's just talk, you know, about this game. And, it, you know, you've already mentioned the name of a player, uh, Malik Willis. And I mean, that's, that whole offense revolves around Malik Willis and whole oh, buddy. I mean, this, this guy's good. Yeah. I mean, he is. And, and, and he, I mean, he's great. I mean, you know, the, the great, the, I mean, the thing that's so t- difficult about him is, you know, he's, he's got a, you know, he's got an NFL arm and, and, yeah. um, and, you know, makes plays and, and that type of thing, but he's also, you know, a running back in a quarterback's body. I mean, he's, he's so dynamic and, you know, he, not only can he, make plays, you know, with his feet getting downfield, he can also make plays, extending plays and then kill you with his arm on that play, you know? And, and so he's not one of those guys that, uh, you know, just automatically going to take off and, you know, type thing. I mean, he, he might buy some time and, and, and throw the ball downfield. He might take off. He might, you know, I, I mean, he, he might, he, he's kind of, you know, the way they use him, he's kind of, kind of like Cam Newton was in his, you know, when he, mm-hmm. in his year at Auburn and, 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 uh, times that they need him to bail them out, he, you know, he turns into Superman and, and they just, you know, there's times where, it, where it almost turns into a uh, backyard football game where you got the best guy on the, on the field and you snap it to him and you just go, you, you know, you run around and make a play and, you know, and there's times where he, where he's capable of doing that. And, uh, you know, you gotta, it's going to be very important that, um, that they, they play their assignment and, um, and, you know, stay, stay disciplined against this guy and they got to tackle him. I mean, I think there's times where he's so elusive, but there, there's times where you just, you know, you're in position to make a tackle and he makes you miss and you gotta, you know, you gotta tackle well. I mean, uh, and, and, and this is a, you know, very good tackling UAB defense, uh, for the most part. So, you know, he's just, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be tough. And I think, you know, I think if you pressure him, um, he, he, he's not as good like any other quarterback, you know, I mean, I think he's, you know, he's, he's been sacked a bunch and, um, you know, even though he's even with an elusive guy like that. So, you know, if you, if you pressure him and you, and you stay disciplined when you pressure him, uh, I mean, you stay in your, in your lanes, you stay within your assignment, uh, and get a lot of guys around him, then, um, you know, you can take him out a little bit of what, what, what he likes to do, but he's, you know, he, he's so good. I mean, he, he's the kind of guy, he's so dynamic that you can stop him 10 plays in a row and that 11th play, he's going to break it for 80. You know I mean? Yeah. He's just that kind of guy. It's not like the kind of guy that you're just going to shut down play after play after play after play. He's just not, I mean, it's just too good, but you've got to limit the big plays by him. You got to try to force him into a couple of mistakes which isn't easy. He still hadn't thrown an interception this year. Had a big, the, you know, had a big fumble against Syracuse, but 
you know, that was, I was kind of trying to make a play, you know, and, yeah. and he just, you know, uh, but, um, you know, he doesn't make many mistakes, but, but you, you got to try to force him into it. And, and the only way to do that again is, is, is play assignment and, and play with discipline. Cause if you get undisciplined, uh, he, he's going to, he'll, 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 they'll expose that in a hurry. And not just with him, with some other guys too. And, you know, I mean, coach Clark said on his press conference that, and he's right is, is that, you know, Hugh Freeze is one, one of the best play callers in the country, you know, yeah. you know, cer- certainly a, an elite play caller. Um, and, and so he's going to, he's going to be able to, you know, if you're, if you're making mistakes, if you're blowing assignments, you're doing some things, he's going to expose that. So it's just one of those games where you can't get too caught up on how great he is. Um, uh, you just gotta, again, play your assignments and, you know, and, and make plays, you know, and, 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 that's a good, I mean, there's, this is a really good UAB defense. So I think that'll help. And hopefully, you know, hopefully that some of the guys that missed last week are going to be healthy. I don't, you know, I don't know for sure what's going to happen with, you know, with Dijon Turner and Chris Mole. And uh, I think who, Oh, I think TD Marshall, I think is pretty close to being back. Hopefully he'll be back. Yeah. Um, you know, Tyler Taylor hopefully is back. Um, and then, you know, if you get those guys back in there, at least some of those guys back in there and healthy, then it's, it's going to help. And I, I really think that Mole is is very important in this game to, to mm-hmm. get him healthy because, you know, he's the guy that's – The spy. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's the best spy guy they have, you know, he because uh, he, he's just – not only is he fast, but he's just so smart. He's just such a, a great take the right angle, you know, play with discipline – you know, as far as assignments go and, and, and just, so he's, it's very important to have him in there. I think the Sean Oliver has really played well. You know, I thought he played tremendous against Tulane and, and I think he has the same, you know, similar speed, but I don't know that, you know, he certainly doesn't have the college experience that, that Chris Mole has and, and, and has seen what Chris Mole has, uh, you know, on the college level. So I think if, if, you know, if Mole, is either limited or can't go, which I don't know if he is or isn't. I mean, I, you know, I hadn't talked to anybody this week about it, but, uh, you know, cause he played last week, some in the first, first half, but you know, didn't, wasn't able to go in the second half. And, uh, you know, you just, I th- just think it's real important that, that he's out there. And if he's not, you, you know, you, you adjust and you, and you go. And, but, uh, I really hope that, uh, you know, he is back and able to play. Yeah. And, you know, just looking at Malik Willis's stats, I mean, he's already in just four games throwing for over 800 yards, 10 touchdowns, and you know, like Steve just mentioned, zero interceptions. He's also the team's leader in rushing. You know, he has um, almost 300 yards. That looks like 274 yard rushing yards and four touchdowns. And, you know, keep in mind, too, in college, you know, they count sacks as a rushing attempt, and he's been sacked yeah. a bunch. So that's that's a plus for UAB. You know, I, you know, and you you throw the film on from this just this past game, the Syracuse game when Liberty played Syracuse. Syracuse was in that backfield a good bit. So if you know if they're able to do that, I'm fairly confident UAB can get in that backfield. You know, some and hopefully we can get some sacks. You know, we didn't get a sack this past week at Tulane, but I felt that the guys did a good job and constantly you know consistently putting pressure on uh, Michael Pratt so uh, from Tulane. So hopefully we can do that again this week. Um, and, you know, kind of just what Steve just mentioned, too, that Malik Willis is he's going to hit some big plays regardless. You know, he's we're going to stop him some, but he's going to have a couple big plays. But it's just how you respond after those big plays will be the test of this UAB defense, because if you just drop your head and say, oh, well, you know, there goes that, then we're going to be in for a long night. But I don't think that will happen, you know, under a Bill Clark team. Um, I think, you know, you just shake off that play and move on to the next. And I think UAB's done a great job so far this season, minus the Georgia game of doing that. Um, so. Yeah, I, I think absolutely. I think you, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I think that, that this, you know, they, they're going to do that under Bill Clark and David Reese. That's, that's going to happen. I mean, you know, right. but so you, you got to keep making plays. You can't give up on a play. If you can run a guy down and, and, you know, make that tackle inside the five yard line. If you have to, they still got to, they still got to find a way to score after that. So just can't give up on plays and, and, and they won't, you know, I, I think it's going to be, uh, I think the defense is going to play well. I mean, you know, uh, again, there's going to be some big plays by that, this Liberty offense. Cause they have a lot of playmakers and a great playmaking quarterback. And so, you know, they're going to, it's going to happen, but you just keep battling and keep playing and I, you know, they, they'll do that. And I, and I do think it's very important too on the other side, 
that that the offense is not only con- controlling the clock a little bit, but just being being an, an effective offense because it can't you know you can't get in a situation where where the defense feels like they they've got to stop this offense or or they don't have a chance. You know you know what I mean. So right. I, I think it's very important that the the offense has has success and and you know played great against Tulane. I love the way they're that that they're um, balanced right now. You know uh, and and obviously this is for now it's Dylan Hopkins show. I'm not sure. I don't know what's going on with Tyler Johnson's hip. But, you know what will happen this week, but it's certainly. Dylan Hopkins, you know, team right now, and 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 he's 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 played so just so so well, right. uh, so you know, I mean, got to hit some, you know, got to try to uh, you know get the you know Garrett Prince and and Hayden Pittman going, but but also got to you know got to have a nice game for the wide receivers, which I thought they played well, uh, and for the wide receivers played pretty well the other night against Tulane. Got to you know got to keep that. I, you know, I would like to see. Uh, I would like to see uh, Trey Schwabshire, uh have uh, you know a Jacksonville State type second half, like he had in the second half. Where, yes. where you know, I mean, it's great that he's hitting these over the top ones the last two games, and that's very important. But I want to see him with five, six, seven catches, and you know, kind of um, turn it into the guy that we know he is or know he can be. So you know, that's important to get him involved. And uh, so you know, hey. Uh, Again, I mean, I, I don't know that you just have to go into the mindset that, hey, we just we got to control the clock, but you do have to have success uh, because if not, you know, the defense just feels too much pressure against a great offense. Definitely. Uh, Steve, real quick, can you talk just a little bit about this uh, Liberty defense um, before we roll our interview? Um, I know you were talking, you know, before we started recording just about how fast these guys were. And, you know, they've got a few transfers in there, too, on this year's defense. Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I think, you know, I think Story Jackson, the linebacker that transferred from Prairie View A&M is, is tremendous. I mean, he, you know, he, he, he just he's a playmaking guy. He's, you know, I think he's, um, you know, he's fast. And I think that's just the, the, the mark of this defense for what I've seen, you know, watching is, they're fast, man. They got guys running all over, you know, and, and, um, they're not, you know, I don't know that they're particularly big, but, uh, but they are super fast. And, you know, our, our John, our guest, will we'll talk a little bit more about that in our interview, but, um, I just, I just really, the two things that, that especially watching that Syracuse game, um, I, what I felt like watching the Syracuse game was they run, I mean, you know, the, the speed and also they tackle well now. I mean, yeah. they, they, they really, they'll hit you now. They'll, they'll, they'll come up and hit you. And, and, um, and, and the Troy game, it jumped out too, you know, and the Troy game was weird is they gave up a long touchdown drive to open the game. And then Troy scored again late, you know, on a, on a long drive late, uh, mm-hmm. you know, to get their 13 points and in between the, you know, they didn't, they didn't score at all. So, uh, they they kind of defensively kind of dominated that game and and I I just think I, I love I loved watching them because I love watching I love watching speed I, you know I think you know that's that's kind of my favorite thing about defense a lot of times and uh, and then I love got the teams that really tackle well and they do you know and and now we'll see you know you know uh, uh, UAB offense has made some pretty good tackling teams. You know, I, I thought Tulane. You know, in the other games, I saw them tackle. Not against Ole Miss, but that's you know, that's a different. That was a yeah. animal. But I thought they tackled well. But I, I thought UAB made them. Ex, you know, I thought they made them miss a lot of tackles, and, and it was, to me, it was just making them miss tackles. It wasn't guys coming up and doing the wrong thing, or you know, just trying to push them or whatever. I mean, they, you know, hey, Dwayne McRae was running through people. I thought Jermaine yeah. Brown ran through some people. You know, certainly Lucius did a little bit. The receivers mm-hmm. did. So, uh, you know, this, this, you know, this UAB offense when when they're clicking can make you miss some tackles. So we'll see. You know, we'll see what what happens with that on Saturday. Definitely looking forward to it again, guys. 6 p.m. Central Time kickoff. Be there at Protective Stadium. Get there early. Be loud. We're going to need you guys. You know, Liberty Flames three and one coming in coming in you know off of a loss but this is a very good team you know really if they were to beat Syracuse you know they would be a top 25 team coming into this ball game so just be prepared for a battle but you know like I just said make sure you guys get in the stands early um tell a friend or two you know we we need you guys there 
And if you can't be there, you know, CBS Sports Network will be televising. But as always, you can catch us, Steve and David Crane, on Jocks 94.5 FM radio. Yeah, so David like, Crane's the best in the business now. I w- if you want to watch that game on TV, turn that sound down and listen to David Crane, and, and you'll, be, you'll be happy you did that. Yes, definitely agree there. But without further ado, we'll go ahead and roll our interview that we had with John Man- uh, Manson. Just thanks again, John, for coming on. And guys, make sure that you guys go check out A Sea of Red. But as always, guys, go Blazers. Well, welcome back, everybody, to the Blazer Victory Podcast. This is your co-host, John Duncan. And of course, I have Steve Irvine, my co-host, with me. And we are pleased to be joined by John Manson of a sea of red, you know, um, you guys need to check them out. Blazer fans, they are a great resource, you know, for Liberty athletics, especially, you know, basketball, football, for sure. Uh, give them a follow on Twitter at a sea of red, uh, twitter.com at a sea of red. And also check out their website, a sea of red.com. You know, John's the owner of a sea of red. And as I just said, they do a great job. But, John, just thank you so much for taking your time to join us on the podcast tonight. Are you doing all right this evening? Doing good, guys. Thanks for having me on. Looking forward to talk some football. Yes, and, you know, hey, I'm sure you're well aware, but this is a huge game, you know, for both programs, but especially for UAB as we get to open up that uh, fantastic new stadium, a uh, protective stadium uh, downtown. And I believe you, you were telling me um, the other day that you're actually making the trip down. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, heading down this weekend. I try to go to a few uh, football games, road games for Liberty each year. And, uh, you know, this year is kind of difficult with their trips or a little bit further away. But, uh, yeah, I definitely had this one circled early on. This was one of the first ones I, I wanted to make sure I got to. I went to Troy just a few weeks ago, and and uh, we also are making a trip to Ole Miss uh, later this year. But, uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to, to getting down to Birmingham. Heard a lot of good things about – about the city, about the area, and obviously the stadium. Been, you know, doing some research on that online. It looks awesome, and can't wait to get there and see it in person. Yeah, well, we're definitely eat, excited eat to have bar- you. On. Eat, eat some barbecue. All right, all right, I, I'm down for that. Just give me some okay. recommendations. Be happy to, to hit up some good places. Okay, we'll let you know. There's a. There's, it seems like there's a good place in every corner, so you know it won't be hard to find good barbecue in Birmingham. Definitely. Yeah, we'll have to, Steve, we'll have to give them some recommendations off the air. But hey, if anybody's listening and wants to sponsor our podcast, hey, here's your perfect opportunity. You know, we can go <laughs> ahead and uh, shout out you guys. Yeah, but John, we'll definitely let you know off the air of some uh, spots to go to for sure. Um, but let's uh, talk about this 2021 Liberty team. Um, it, you know, obviously you've got Malik um, Willis back who, you know, as we've discussed before on our podcast, you know, he's going to definitely be a first-round draft pick uh, next year in the NFL. Um, But what do you see, John, out of Malik Willis that just this year so far that just makes him even better than he was last year? Because last year, you know, he was lights out. But what what do you see maybe that he's doing different this year? Well, the, the number one thing is ball control. Last year, he had a lot of issues. And, of course, I say that right after the Syracuse said, game yeah. where, where he had the fumble that basically lost the game. But that was his first turnover of the season. It was Liberty's uh, offense's first turnover of the season. So last year he had – you know, last year was his first year uh, starting and playing any meaningful snaps in college football, you know, because he was at Auburn and, and, you know, didn't really play much and sat out a year at Liberty when he transferred. And it was his first time getting on the field. And, and uh, obviously he's a guy that likes to get out of the pocket, run, make plays with his legs. And uh, he, he would carry the ball a little bit too loose. Uh, and several times he would get hit and the ball would come loose. And, you know, Liberty may have recovered a few of those, but they lost several as well. Uh, so that, that's probably the biggest thing he's improved upon is is his ball control. Like I said, that, that was his first turnover this past uh, Friday night against Syracuse up in the Carrier Dome. And, and you know, th- th- that's probably his biggest weakness. I mean, of course, you're talking about a guy who's, who's hopefully and likely going to be a first-round draft pick and, you know, being rumored to be mentioned among a dark horse Heisman candidate. So, I mean, you know, we can sit here and talk about how great he is and, and all that stuff, which he is. Uh, you know, but but if you wanted to point out a weakness of his, 
you, you know, which, which you have to, you know, take it in stride too. Because, but the weakness is that sometimes he holds onto the ball a little bit too long, takes more sacks than he should, um, you know, because he's trying to make a play. And that's what happened in that that game against Syracuse where, when he fumbled. Uh, and that set up Syracuse's game-winning uh, field goal there, the last play of the game, uh, and they they got the win, 24-21. But it, it was him just trying to make a play, and that's what that's what he does. And so many times, I'm sure you guys will see it uh, Saturday night against UAB. Um, you know, he's able to make plays when you you feel like he's you know contained in in the backfield and going to go down for a loss or or going to have to throw the ball away. He'll he'll escape and and you know be able to make make a positive play and pick up a few yards or a first down or, or whatever the case may be. So, um, you, you know, that's one thing he's been working on, but, but it's hard for, for a guy like him and coach Freeze has said that, you know, it, you know, it's okay to, to take some of those plays every now and then for Malik, because, you know, you don't want to handcuff him and, and say, Hey, get rid of the ball first sign of, of trouble, because, you know, that's kind of what makes him so good is his, his escape ability and, uh, ability to make plays um, when there's nothing there, he turns them into positives. Right now, um, so, real quick, um, before the Troy game, I, you know, I wasn't able to watch any uh, pregame uh, press conference or postgame press conference from the Troy game. But was anything said from Malik about coming back to the state of Alabama? You know, since he transferred from Auburn, was there anything said by him? Yeah, well, the interesting thing with the the Troy game, as I'm sure you guys know very well, is uh, Chip Lindsey's their head coach, which he was the offensive coordinator at Auburn and was there. When That's he, right. When he was at at Auburn, so uh, one thing about Malik, if you watch any of his uh, his interviews or press conferences, he's the most humble guy you'll ever meet, and and he'll he gives all the perfect answers. You're not going to ever get him you know, to slip up and say something. And so, of course, yeah, he was asked about about Chip Lindsey and returning to Alabama and things like that. And he's from Atlanta, so, you know, closer to home as well, too. But, uh, you know, he, he doesn't really give give any notable quotes for for any uh, visiting fans to uh, to pay attention to. But, um, yeah, so, so you, you don't really get a lot out of him as far as locker room talk or, or anything like that. So he's not going to pull like a what was it the ODU safety said something before the Liberty game that he can't throw or something like that. Yeah, that definitely raised a lot of eyebrows in the Liberty <laughs> locker room. And uh, of course, Malik went out and had five touchdowns that that week and four through the air. So yeah, I, you won't you won't hear Malik doing that. <laughs> where where would this team be? Where would, particularly offensively? Where, where would they be without Malik Willis? I mean, obviously you have a great you know, offensive head coach and, and, you know, have some talent there, but w- without the dynamic player that he is, you know, where do you think they'd be without him? Oh, that's a great question. And, and you know, it's almost impossible to answer. Uh, but, you know, to, to be honest with you, before Malik, uh, Liberty had its greatest quarterback of all time, uh, Stephen Buckshot Calvert. Uh, he, he, if you look in Liberty's record book, he owns all the records for quarterbacks. He was a four-year starter, came in as a true freshman and started. And of course, that was when Liberty was still at the FCS level, and he was there for the transition to the FBS and and, and getting to the team to its first bowl game there when when Liberty went and beat Georgia Southern in the 2019 Cure Bowl. That was his senior year when Malik was sitting out, um, and, and they had a very prolific offense then. Uh, ran up and down the field, scored bunch points in bunches. Um, they also had a uh, wide receiver, Antonio Gandy Golden, who was a fourth round draft pick by by the Washington football team. And and uh, he's on their practice squad right now. Um, so they were very talented then. And then Freeze comes in and and, you know, things shift over to Malik and it's a new offense RPO type type uh, system. Um, but Liberty's got some some talented players. They got uh, two slot receivers. DJ Stubbs is a super senior. Uh, he's missed the last two games with foot injury. Uh, his question his uh, he's questionable this week. No no uh, definitive answer on whether or not he'll be able to play. But he was a team's leading receiver last year. Uh, Demario Douglas, another slot receiver that that's very good. He's got three touchdowns so far, leads the team in touchdowns on the receiving end. Uh, the biggest weakness on the offense is outside receiver. They don't really have a go-to guy that's you know a six-three or six-four big body type guy, uh, so that's caused some problems. Um, but but they got a few talented running backs. They got a transfer from Utah, 
uh, TJ Green, who, who's in there this year, the first year, Joshua Mack, who's, who was a transfer from, uh, from Maine, who's been at Liberty now for three years. And he's a top, you know, almost rushed for a thousand yards last year and he's back. And then Shadro Lewis is a, a small little shifty back. So they rotate those three backs pretty frequently. Um, you know, but, but obviously Malik is, is the stir, stir or the straw to the drink, you know, he stirs it and keeps it moving and, and uh, things seem like they're stagnant at times, but he's able to, to break free and, and make plays happen. And, and he's fun to watch, you know, no doubt about it. And John, what did Syracuse do well to basically, I mean, you know, Malik still had a, you know, pretty decent game other than, you know, as we, as you mentioned before, uh, fumbling on that last drive to give uh, Syracuse that uh, game winning field goal. But what did they do well um, on defense to kind of just, basically keep Malik Willis crumbling around and not performing as well as he has been before that game. I think the biggest thing was their pressure. Their defensive line was able to get into the backfield uh, and, and make Malik, you know, hurry things along, maybe not let him sit. Malik is perfectly content as much as he can make plays on the ground. He's perfectly content to sit back there if you let him and dink and dunk and, and take shots down the field. He's got a live arm. Uh, he can make all the throws, uh, and he's very accurate. So he, he's perfectly content if the defense lets him just sit back there and, and pick you apart. Um, he's done that on occasions. Um, but but Syracuse didn't let him do that. They they attacked him, blitzed him. Uh, their defensive front had made you know all types of nightmares for the Liberty offensive line. They probably saw them in their in their dreams uh, over the weekend. <laughs> but um, you know, so that was their their biggest thing that they did is they they rushed him, hurried him up, made him make decisions quicker than he wanted to. Didn't let him go through his progressions th through the uh, passing game, made him bail out of the pocket before he wanted to. But then they were also they did a pretty good job of letting him you know, of keeping containment. Because a lot of times, you know, a lot of other, you know, non-Power 5 teams have, have attempted to do that, you know, pressure Malik, but then they'll just escape containment and he'll pick up 20 yards on third and 17 and keep the chains moving. Uh, we've seen that a number of times. So that, that was the big thing they were able to do is, is create the pressure, but at the same time, keep him contained. And, and, you know, some of those, you know, normal 15 or 20 yard gains went for, you know, a two or three yard gain and they were able to get get the offense off the field. The other thing they did is Sean Tucker, their running back, who's uh, he's, he's a tremendous running back, one of the best in the country, just a freshman. Uh, he ran for 170 yards. So so they kept Liberty's offense on, on the sideline too, kept Malik on the sideline. So if you can do that and uh, also, you know, contain him in the pocket there, uh, those are probably your pet best two uh, bets. Nice. Now, I, I know you hit on the uh, the running back trio um, a little bit earlier, John. I mean, you know, and you see it in the film. But is there anything that you think that's maybe holding those guys back? Because the numbers don't look as great, especially as the running production was last year in the 2020 Liberty team. Yeah, I mean, sure. That's been a, you know, I don't want to say a question mark. It's, it's been something that's been a disappointment for Liberty so far this year. And, and the other thing that's been a disappointment, probably even greater than the uh, offensive line or than the running back is the offensive line. I mean, they returned all five starters, the top eight guys from last year. Uh, their starting center has started 51 straight games. I mean, they're a very experienced group. And last year, Liberty was the number 10 rushing offense in the country. Um, you know, obviously Malik led the team in rushing, but – but Mac was right there, 940 some odd yards rushing last year, and um, you know the, they had three guys running last year too, three running backs. So uh, I think the biggest problem has been the offensive line. I mean, there's been you know Syracuse got in and sacked him, you know, five or six times. Troy was able to get in and sack Malik four or five, six times. Uh, ODU, you know, even though it was a lopsided game, they were able to to get a few sacks on Malik, and and, and the run game has not been able to get going, you know. I, primarily because there hasn't been enough holes there. Now, the offensive line has been banged up. They've they've had, uh, you know, two starters were out for the Troy game. Uh, then the the backup right tackle who started that game got injured in the Troy game and, and went down. So they've been, uh, you know, less than full strength for most of the year. Um, but it looks like most of those guys will be back this week. Um, had, had several of them return last week against Syracuse. 
and then a couple that that were able to play but but didn't go that that'll probably be closer to 100 percent this week so uh, the offensive line has been the biggest uh, disappointment for the liberty offense and it's probably holding back the offense as a whole uh, and particularly those running backs now, John, on the defensive side of the ball for uh, the Flames, it looks like stat-wise, a Story Jackson is the leading tackler right now. Um, would you say that maybe that defense revolves around Jackson? Or, yeah, I, I, not, I wouldn't necessarily say that. You know, Liberty returns ten starters from from defense, ten offense, and ten starters on defense from last year. Uh, but they brought in several transfers that have been immediate impact players, and Story Jackson's one of those guys. He's a a transfer from Prairie View A&M and FCS program, and uh, he's come in at linebacker, and, and you know he's making all the tackles. He, he's definitely the most talented linebacker Liberty has had under Freeze and defensive coordinator Scott Simons, which is their third year there now. Uh, so he's very good. They also got a true freshman at linebacker Ahmad Walker, who's coming on and, and playing well. Uh, but their defensive line is really the strength of that defense. Um, Darrell Johnson is a defensive end who's on the senior bowl uh, watch list and uh, potential draft pick next year. A lot of NFL scouts coming and checking him out. 6'3", 6'4", edge rusher. Uh, He's been hobbled some this year, so his stats aren't quite there. But if you look at his stats from last year when he was healthy, he he put up a lot of numbers. They got a lot of depth up front. Um, You know, Kendi Charles is a redshirt freshman that's uh, top 15 in the country in sacks. I think he's got four and a half sacks right now. And he kind of came out of nowhere, was expected to be, you know, maybe fourth or fifth best interior defense alignment. And he, he's been able to make a name for himself in these first few games. Uh, Trayshawn Clark's another edge rusher they have. Uh, so so the defensive line is really the the strength of the defense. Uh, they're able to to make pressure, get pressure on, on opposing teams. And, uh, you know, the, you know, anytime you got a strong defensive line, it makes your back end even better. Right. Seems like this defense, I mean, from watch with tape I've watched, film, I, you know, games I've watched, it, it, you know, it's kind of built around speed. I mean, I don't know that there's a lot of size there, but I mean, boy, are they fast. Uh, you know, at least they look like it on, you know, watching on TV. Uh, kind of, is that what, uh, is, is that what stands out about this defense a little bit, do you think? Yeah, I, I would agree with that. That's something that uh, Coach Simons is a guy. He, he was at uh, West Georgia there for, for a long time as a defense coordinator and come up through the ranks. He was at Memphis for a period of time before he came to Liberty. And and he's been big on on defense. And one thing about Coach Freeze is, he, you know, he's the head coach of, of the team, obviously, but the head coach of the offense. And he kind of let – let Simons be the head coach of the defense. And he's he's been all about speed, getting guys that, that can run to the ball, fly to the ball, you know, try to get 11 hats to the ball every, every play. And uh, that's definitely something they've, they've done. They, they've added uh, – Skylar Thomas is another transfer they got from, uh, from Washington State who started some games out there in the Pac-12. And now he's come in here as a senior, and he's started every game so far at safety for, for Liberty. They got Javon Scruggs. A uh, local kid here in, in just outside of Lynchburg that's a uh, starter pretty much his whole career. This is his third year starting, another safety. Um, you know, so they got a lot of speed on the back end. Jerron Lowe, another transfer from UTEP uh, that was, uh, I believe, Conference USA all-freshman team a year or two ago. He's a, he's a corner that had an interception a couple weeks ago. And um, so, so they got a lot of, a lot of new incoming uh, transfers that have been able to make uh, an impact and definitely speed is something that has been uh, the defense coordinator Simon's uh, calling card is going after guys that can fly all over the field. And that's, that's something that, and, and the defense, you know, two or three years ago before freeze and Simon's got here, the defense was really the weakness of the team. I mentioned Buckshot and AGG on offense. They could, you know, run up and down the field and put a lot of points on the board, but um the defense w- was giving up 50 points and 500 yards of offense at the same time. So they couldn't win, you know, they had to win in shootouts. <laughs> right. But now the defense is, you know, they were top 10 total defense last year and a scoring defense is, is up in the top twenties or so as well. So, and, and they're doing the same thing this year and, and even better and, and deeper than they were last year. D- defensively, you know, this week on Saturday, I mean, I guess UAB, I mean, what, what do you think? I mean, are they going to – do you think they'll take the approach of, hey, you take the run of the game away first and then, you know, we're about to pass or, or, or kind of vice versa? I mean, what do you think their plan will be just just guessing this week, you know, for Saturday? 
Yeah, well, you, you guys know more about UAB than I do. So, but I mean, I've obviously I watched you guys play against Jacksonville State the first game of the year, and watched your game this past Saturday night against Tulane. And uh, you, you obviously, like, you know, like to run the ball first and foremost, and then kind of use the pass off of that. And uh, your quarterback there last week had a really good game, and I would imagine he would start again this week. But uh, mm-hmm. I would think you know Liberty would like to you know put you guys in second and third and longs. So that that's something that that'll always be something that Liberty tries to do. And and then if they can get you in a third and long, they're going to bring the house and, and unload some of those uh, young defensive linemen and defensive ends that can really you know attack the quarterback in that backfield and and try to make some positive plays for the defense. Um, so I would imagine that that's what Liberty will try to do is is go in on the run on first and second downs, try to get, you know, get you behind the chains and third and longs. And, and Liberty's defense really good in third and longs. You know, I don't have the stats in front of me, but if they get you in third and seven or longer, uh, more than likely they're going to, you know, get the, get the offense off the field and, and get the ball back into Malik's hands. What I mean, I know you only had a couple of days of, of, of being around in this week since you know since they lost, but and and they hadn't lost much in the last two years, obviously. So what 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 would the what would you say the mood is around this from from what you've seen around this team, you know the the uh, right now? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, like, like you said, his first loss of the season against Syracuse. It was a game that Liberty, you know, they had the ball first and goal inside the five with six minutes left in a tie game and and feels like they should have won that game and then got the ball back after they they got stopped on fourth and goal inside the five and got the ball back with four minutes left still in a tie game and that's when the leak fumbled so uh the team has definitely left a sour taste in the team's uh mouth you know liberty was you know in the ap poll like number 27 and with all the upheaval we had last week and lots of teams in the top 25 losing liberty probably would have been ranked this week and that was something they wanted to get back to you know they spent a lot of the year last year ranked and last year, 10 and one, you know, only had one loss last year to, to NC State. And that was a 15 to 14 game where Liberty had the field goal blocked at the last, you know, last minute of the game where they, they could have won that game. So uh, you have to go back to 2019 before Liberty's lost more than a game, one game in a season. So it's been a long time with with not a lot of not a lot of losses in, in that loss column. And uh, Malik Willis, it's only his second loss as a starting quarterback. Um, you know, so, so that's definitely a big question mark for, for Liberty this year. What, you know, this week, what, how do they respond to that loss? Uh, you know, does it make them more hungry, more, uh, you know, motivated to, to not have two straight losses to get out there? Because they know they got a very tough challenge this week against a very good UAB team. And if they don't bring, uh, you know, their A game, they're going to, you know, face two straight def- two, two straight losses two straight defeats and um, mm-hmm. you know, but, but what I can tell from what I can tell so far and, and definitely talking to Malik, who's, you know, the leader of the team is uh, you know, coach free says every Sunday we go back and we watch the film. And then at the end of that meeting, at the end of the discussion, they, they flush it. It's in the past and now we're moving forward. And, and Malik has, has said that as well this week. And, and uh, of course, we, we won't really find out, I guess, until Saturday night. But I would imagine, you know, this is a team made up of veterans. They're, they're not going to, you know, sulk too long. I'm sure, you know, they the game was Friday night. So I'm sure they had, you know, Saturday and Sunday they could lay low and, you know, sulk in their misery if they wanted to. But, you know, Monday they're, they're back at it and ready to work. And I'm sure they'll be ready to go this week. And, John, just one last question. Um... We're all anticipating, you know, even Vegas is anticipating this to be a very tight ball game, and that's definitely reflected in the point spread of just a one and a half point uh, edge to UAB. But can you talk a little bit about Liberty's kicking game? Because <laughs> looking at the uh, looks like the Liberty kicker, he's attempted four field goals and only made one. Is that something that Hugh Freeze has addressed recently? Because I mean, that's not good. <laughs> no. No, you're exactly right. And, and uh, you know, Liberty, you know, go back to the Syracuse game again, they, uh, uh, they were one of three in the red zone. And they the, the first drive they had, they go down the length of the field and got down to the 15-yard line. It was fourth and two. And uh, Freeze originally decided to, to go, for, go for it on fourth down, but the play clock was getting late. It was late getting the play in, so they called a timeout. And, and after the timeout, he, he sent the field goal unit out. And, of course, they missed the field goal, 36-yarder. And, uh, you know, Alex Barbier, he's a transfer from Penn State. Um, he, he's he, if you look at the guy, he's a bodybuilder. I mean, he's, you know, five foot ten, but, you know, two hundred and thirty five pounds. I mean, he's a thick guy. 
And uh, he made some big kicks. You know, if you go back and look at the Virginia Tech game last year, he made a 53-yarder, you know, with no time left on the clock to, to win the game, which that's obviously a huge win for Liberty, in-state FBS opponent in Virginia right. Tech. Uh, you know, so that was huge. You know, he'll always be remembered for that kick, regardless of if he makes another field goal this year or not. Uh, but yeah, he's, he was, he struggled last year. He was in, in the mid, mid range, you know, from 30 to 50 yards in a uh, field goal range. He was something like six of 12 last year. And uh, this year so far, all four of his kicks have been in that range, 30 to 50 yards. And, and he's just one of four. Uh, Freeze was asked about it this week, and he said, you know, in practice this week, they're going to be evaluating that. Is is Barbier still the guy that that should be trotting out there Saturday night uh, down there in, in Birmingham uh, to, to take the kicks, uh, take the field goal duties? And uh, there's two or three – there's actually three freshmen. They got a guy that redshirted last year, and then they brought in two walk-ons this year. Uh, and all three of them, you know – can kick and but again for a kicker as you know it, it's one thing if you can you know make 10 out of 10 in practice but can you do it under the lights with you know 40 some thousand fans there screaming down your throat uh so it'll be interesting and and i wouldn't be surprised if free just says forget it we're going forward on fourth down all up and down the field yeah. thing which is kind of interesting speaking of special teams uh, Liberty starting punter, which has been the starting punter for the last three years, he broke his clavicle and he's out mm. for a couple mm. weeks now. And uh, they had their backup, a walk on freshman uh, punter last week, the first time he played against Syracuse. He actually did pretty well, but uh, Liberty's special teams are definitely a, a big question mark right now at this point in the season. And I wouldn't be surprised if Freeze says, forget it, we're going for it. On f- if it's fourth and less than five, we'll go for it. Yeah, you know, he frees. He loves those analytics for sure. He's always been that way. Yeah. Uh, um, well, Steve, did you have any other questions? No, I think uh, this has been great. Uh. Yes, John. Well, thank you again for uh, coming on, guys. Um, if you aren't already, uh, make sure to give um, a sea of red a follow on Twitter and go to a sea of red dot com and check out that work. Uh, Steve's actually been working with a uh, Brett Jones um, from a sea of red. So there should be another uh, a piece out about UAB. Um, in the next couple of days. So be on the lookout for there. And, you know, we'll retweet that from our account as well. But uh, Steve and I will be back in just a couple of days after the game to give you guys an instant recap about what happened between UAB and Liberty. Um, But until then, guys, as always, go Blazers.